got this lawnmower on the bench and uh, as you can tell it's brand new it has not cut one single blade of grass customer brought it to me he said he bought three of these at one time and uh, he serviced them out put gas in all three put oil in all three two of them started right off and ran perfectly and this one wouldn't start so I've got the bale pulled back and we're going to I'll just show you real quick I just made a grave mistake and I can hear the keyboard cowboys right now oh more medic you didn't disconnect the spark plug wire before you started spinning the motor over you're gonna chop your fingers off no I'm not this engine has no compression so what we're going to do is a cylinder leak down test I'll show you how to do that so basically what you need to do first is pull the spark plug out go ahead and pull the spark plug boot off take your wrench loosen up your spark plug go ahead and unscrew that beautiful today as you can tell that spark plug has never had a fuel run through it or nothing it has never sparked or even ran it's a little wet because they've tried to use some starting fluid I'm sure Let's go ahead and get out the trusty cylinder leakage tester and I'll show you all how to uh, set this up. You can buy these uh, pretty on anywhere. You can get them at an auto store. I think Harbor Freight sells one. Uh, this one just happens to be from uh, Kohler Engines uh, back, 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 way back. So it's pretty old, but it still works. Go ahead and get your test uh, hose screwed in as you can tell it's got an o-ring here and an o-ring this is 14 millimeter threads and this is what 16 or 18 I can't remember what size spark plugs the bigger size is but go ahead and just th thread this in and you don't have to over tighten it just thread it until it butts up against the o-ring and just give it a little twist like that and that's plenty what you want to do, you want to hook your uh, your tester up to shop air. It can be at any PSI, 150, whatever. And what you want to do, you want to unlock your regulator. And you want to turn this clockwise until this goes all the way to set. We're not worried about this gauge right now. Actually, this gauge doesn't do anything. It just shows you what your shop air is. So just keep turning until it gets to set all the way to zero anywhere in that yellow see if you go a little bit too pat too far past you can turn it back the other way and I like to get it as close to zero as possible all right so now what we're going to do is plug this into your hose that you have in your spark plug hole and you're going to listen for air coming out pop the air filter off and you can hear, I'm going to spin this motor over. So we have an abundance of air coming through the carburetor. So when I'm turning this engine over, that's telling me 
that the intake valve is not closing. So let's dig a little deeper and see what we can find. It's just three screws. Go ahead and pull the screws that hold the valve cover on and let's just take a look and see what's going on here. This is a 5500 or a 550 series Briggs engine. And there we have the valves. So let's just look and see. I'm going to turn this engine over by hand. And just look and see if the valves are opening and closing. And nothing wrong there. Oh man, hold on a second. We've got something going on with that uh, intake valve. Let me get this rocker arm off and let me show you. It's a 5 16 or 8 millimeter. Just go ahead and give it a loosen. Hell, let me get you off the tripod here just for a second. The valve spring is there, but the valve stem is not seated in the keeper. Let's pull that off easy so we don't lose a valve. Let's inspect that. Still got the assembly lube on it. Why did that valve come out of that keeper? I don't know, unless the shoulder of the valve itself. We're going to put it back together and see if she'll fire off. I'm going to put cylinder pressure to hold the valve closed while we reassemble the intake valve. Just go ahead and screw your hose back in. Let's go ahead and put your leak tester back on the hose that time let's see what it tried to do was push the uh, piston down in the bore Let's rotate this engine around by hand under here. Be careful. And I'm going to put the engine at top dead center. If you can. Right there. Okay, with the, that, that valve is tightly closed. Just let it sit there. You can work with it all day now. This is a uni unidirectional spring. Just for the sake of sakes, I'm going to turn the keeper with the slot down. And let's reinstall the rocker arm.
I know what's wrong with it. I know what's wrong with it. Dead gummit. Why didn't I see that before? So whenever I went to put the rocker arm back on, I'm like, when I went to put the rocker arm back on, I noticed that the valve spring retainer is higher than the center part of the valve. I'm like, what the heck? Because what would happen was, what could have happened is that the rocker arm pushed down on the valve keeper and pushed it right off the valve. Let me show you why. This engine, take the other one off here. This engine was assembled from the factory without a valve stem cap. Luckily, I got a junk mower in the back back here that's got one of these engines and let's go grab one off of it and inspect it. Ain't that something? Oh, I got me a little bone pile going over here in the back of the shop. I think it's, yeah, this is the one with the bent crank. engine on it too yeah let's just pull this valve cover off here and I'll get the keeper out of this motor take this off yep there's the keeper one little old part got the customer fouled up got me fouled up because I'm pissed off at Briggs and Stratton. Let's go put her back together. Good, good. Put our rocker arms back on. Whoops, sorry about that. The compressor kicked on. Uh, one thing I like about this engine is <laughs> you cannot get your rocker arms messed up, mixed up because they're actually different lengths. So what you'll do is uh, show you, pretty self-explanatory. You look at your uh, push rod length to this is shorter than this push rod to that. So you know your long one will go to your exhaust valve. Go ahead and tighten down your, just get them tight because you'll have to uh, finger tight because you'll have to adjust them once we get the engine rolled around to top dead center. I'm going to go ahead and take this out of here so I can see the piston. I'm going to roll it around by hand. Give it a couple of turns and can't see the piston so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a blunt tool to go inside the cylinder and we're going to turn it until it's it top dead right 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 there and we're going to go about just a little bit past start that over I got messed up so we got intake compression okay so that's where we want to be I was on the bottom side of the stroke not the top side okay so the as you can see I'm wiggling the crank back and forth so right there is top dead center Go ahead and tighten down our rocker arms. We'll 
check our clearances. This one seems to be a little tight, so we're going to get the gauges. I'm going to see if I can find my feeler gauges. You know, it's obvious that the intake valve is going to be off because they tried to adjust the rocker arm with no valve stem uh, cap. So uh, the spec is five. So just we're just going to run it in there. I'm going to run the nut down until we have a light drag. A little bit more. That's about right, right there. Just want just light drag. And it's such a small footprint on the rocker arm to adjust. There we go. Just a light drag. Now just tighten your centered nut. You may have to hold the, the rocker arm itself, the nut, which I'm going to have to do. Let me get a uh, 5 16 wrench. Guys, I'm going to put links to everything in this video, tool-wise, parts-wise. Okay, just tighten that. And do the same thing for the exhaust valve. I've already set it, so we're going to just tighten the center screw. <clears throat> Good to go. Throw the valve cover back on there and see if she'll fire up. Let's go ahead and tighten down your valve cover bolts. Hey, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe, and what the heck, there's that little uh, bell thing down there that you can hit to get all my notifications. If you don't hit the bell, you may not get my next video, so please do that. Okay, let's do the leak down test again and see where we're at. Okay, so I reset my gauge to set. I put the spark plug uh, lead back in, not the lead, but the hose. And now I'm going to spin the engine over by hand. And we're gonna watch this one creep up. And it'll be hard to pull this engine through because you're building compression. If you're wondering what that horn sound is, is the breather in the engine. As you can tell, this engine has about 5% ah, It's brand new, nothing sealed. I mean, you know, it's you hadn't, hadn't ran the engine, and I guarantee you if I take the uh, oil cap off, it'll stop. Yep. I hear just a little bit of hissing through the uh, oil cap, but like I said, this engine has never ran. That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what's happening is, you know, you have to break in an engine, so you might be getting a little uh, leakage past the rings until they seat and whatnot, but uh, let's go ahead and I've already checked the oil. Tighten that back down. You're gonna have a little buzzing sound coming through the reed valve on the uh, the breather. But uh, yeah, that's a healthy engine. You don't want anything past like 20 or 30 percent. If you have an engine that's 20 or 30 percent, it's starting to get a little sick. So let's get it cranked up and see if it'll start. I'm not going to blame the uh, the valve stem being stiff in the head. That's I'm going to say that was assembly lube, but we got it freed up anyway. Got that assembly lube washed down into the cylinder anyway. So here we'll do a cold start and see what it does.
10 minutes, the smoke is cleared. This mower is ready to go back in service. If you have any questions about four cycle engines, especially Briggs and Stratton, let me know. Mower Medic 1. Y'all have a great day.